I'm going to start with a couple little warm up things that are going to connect into what I wanted to show you today, which is a project I did recently where I did some field layouts of ADA ramps with Bluebeam and then painting out the striping and kind of doing up a, a field layout. And then how do you put that into a drawing? And I thought Bluebeam was really helpful way to do that. I use these features up here called sketch to scale. They're, they're measurement tools, but they have a little bit different functionality. Another way you can get to them if you don't have that toolbar is under the tools box at the top. You should see a sketch to scale up there as well. And I'll be honest, I had used them in the past, but I didn't really like them. Thought they were clunky and hard to use. For this particular project, I thought they worked really, really well. So anyways, to start off, I wanted to show you a couple other things that I've noticed being helpful. The first one is shortcut keys. There are shortcut keys built into most of the commands that we have. If you highlight over something, you can see it's where I'm highlighting, it says rectangular sketch to scale. And then there's a little Z behind it. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. And a bunch of the other ones have little letters or numbers next to them as well. Same thing if you go to your tools, you can see under markups, there's actually a little letter right next to those markup box. And that's actually a shortcut. So for example, text box, if I hit the letter T on my keyboard or W on my keyboard, T will do a text box, W will do a typewriter, N will do a note. These are pretty helpful. It's hard to remember all of them, obviously, but there might be a couple of them that you use a lot that you want to use. For example, Q is a text box. Again, this is, you also probably have a lot of tools built into your tool chest. So you may just use the tool chest, but this was something that I thought maybe you didn't know about that you could use. But the thing that I really wanted to show you is that these are actually customizable. You can change those letters and those shortcuts. So by going to the review tab at the top under keyboard shortcuts, this will bring up all the different shortcuts that are in here. And I actually changed a couple of them that I found myself really wishing there was a shortcut key for. And the, the couple that I changed were the length command, I changed to M. I think it goes to this measure tool is the default, probably what you all have when you hit M. The measure tool just picks the most recent measuring tool that you've done. So any of these purple ones, if you just recently done an area command and you hit M, it will do the area command again. If you've just done a diameter command, it will just do that diameter command again. So being able to actually set it to the length I found to be really helpful. And then the area one is one I use a lot too. I set that to A. So now if I hit on my keyboard, hitting the letter A, I can do an area command or M for measure. So that's something that I thought was really cool, the ability to be able to customize that. And if, if you notice on these sketch to scale ones that I'm going to talk about in a little bit here, there probably are not any shortcut keys for those. So I actually added in a shortcut key for those because I like shortcuts. So I went in and I added, you can see a Z, which is very handy with your left hand to hit for rectangular sketch to scale the one I use the most, and then X for polyline sketch to scale. Those are the two that I found used a lot for this particular exercise. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you for this was that, say I wanna draw a line. So I go to my line command or I hit L. I can snap to existing lines that are drawn in here, or I can snap to lines that are in the background on my background map. And sometimes you might wanna do that and sometimes you might not want to. Those are your snapping tools or like what do you snap to? And I found for this exercise, it was actually becoming very annoying to be snapping to the background images. And so I went into review tab here and I went to preferences and under the general tab under grid and snap, you can uncheck the snap to content or the snap to markup or many of these other ones if you want to. But if you uncheck this snap to content and hit okay, now when I come in here, I'm not gonna actually to those lines. You can see it's not snapping to them. So another thing that I found helpful for this exercise, but a tool that perhaps you might want to do. Okay, so one other way to get to that ability to not snap to content would be to flatten your, your document. And what flattening does, it's sort of printing it out and it does not preserve the smartness or the vector line work. So here's an example. This drawing right here, it's not flattened. It, the content built into the drawing is usable for snapping. But if I go to the next page, I've actually already flattened this. And you can see I've turned everything into black and white because I wanted to make sure that it was obvious that it was sting line work. Snap to content turned on. I'm not able to snap to that content. So the way to do that is you can go to your document, 
and there is a flatten button in there, which is right here at the bottom. By flattening your document, you can pull out some of the layers. You can make your, your drawing a little bit dumber. This, the same thing will happen if you go in and file print this. And if you print it as a PDF, a little background, I'm not sure if you have seen these ramps being laid out in the field. The whole point of doing this is to avoid using survey. And so when we have our surveyors go out, it takes a long time. It's often quite expensive. And then curb ramps, ADA ramps are not usually rocket science to build. Some of them are complicated, but most of them are pretty straightforward. If you've done a few of them, if you've been trained with the field layout, you can design them, you can lay them out, you can draw them up without any survey being done. And what you do is you use a laser level, the contractor tool that allows you to get relative elevations for each of your ramps. So you would start off by a setting what's called a mag nail and you hammer a nail into the ground and you set it at five feet is what we typically set them at. And then you have a rod that can tell the difference between that point and this point. So this point right here is at 4.0. So I know there's a one foot difference between five and four. Now, if I wanted to know the difference between this elevation and one a mile down the road, I would need survey to help me to figure that out. But in terms of the relative elevations on this particular ramp, I can determine that with just a laser level, you can design a ramp with just that information. So here is a general layout of a ramp. And I built these with different scale to sketch tools. So I started off with a general layout and then I drew in these elevations. I drew all the elevations in gray, things that were existing elevations. So I've determined all the gray ones in the field and then all the blue ones were my design. Sometimes they're the same elevations where I'm tying in, it's gotta be the same elevation. And occasionally the ramps themselves would actually be the same elevation. But most times I'm adjusting something, to tell the contractor what elevation he needs to build that at. So this is what the ramp, the total project actually looks like when it's done. I have red drawn in over top of a background map. The background map I created using GIS. Probably a better way to do it would be to have your CAD drafter or, or someone who can make it use our standard line work. This is not our standard line work, but I think it's it's good enough for the, the project that I was working on. That was a very fast pace. I only had two weeks to pump out a bunch of ramps. I didn't have a lot of time to, to make it look perfect, but you can see I have red drawn in here for where the score joints are gonna be, where our grade breaks are gonna be. I have the purple in here for all my measurements. Then I have blue in here for everywhere that I'm gonna have an elevation call out. All right, so here's what I generated out of GIS. I think I started with the curb line, back a walk. Again, these ones are they're plus or minus a foot or two. You're not really that confident in the, the data that you're getting out of here. I would say you, you need to be looking at this in combination with your photos and street view is so valuable for this. So I, I a lot of the time I had street view open with this and I was trying to eyeball, see what, what made sense, what didn't, and then you gather data before you go out in the field. And I tried to do some preliminary layouts before going out in the field, but I think going out in the field is really where you do most of your work. So then I go out in the field, I was showing you, I drew out where all the lines were gonna be. And then I'm actually bringing this, this curb here is, we're making this a tighter radius than it was previously. So that's why some of these points, looks like they're floating out in space. I'm not actually that interested in what the existing curb elevation is. I'm much more interested in what is my posed curb going to be. So these are drawn off based on what the proposed curb is gonna be. So I picked up all of this data and then we went back in the office to try to figure out what my proposed grades need to be. How far back do I need to go to, how far back do I need to tie back in to make all the slopes work? This is where I wanted to show you how I actually made this using Bluebeam. This is what I'm gonna draw, a simplified version of the ramp. Using this rectangular sketch to scale tool, which is the one that I mainly used. And then I also used my tool chest where I, I ended up making a tool set that allows me to make sure I'm consistent with the, the markup type. But I'll just show you mostly the, the sketch to scale stuff here. So start off with a rectangle. You just start with any point. And you can see as I start making it, it's being the width, the height, and the rotation. Now I purposely picked a ramp that is not at a skew, uh, perpendicular and parallel to the north, north and south. That is one annoying thing about the sketch to scale is that if you do have to rotate to draw a different ramp, it's quite a bit more annoying. Definitely possible, but more annoying. I would actually recommend drawing it in uh, perpendicular as I'm doing here to start with. So I'm gonna hit, I'm just gonna start with my landing, a five by five foot, and I'll hit enter. 
and then same thing. I'll draw this in at you can see it's it's snapping already to it, but sometimes it doesn't quite tie it in perfectly five feet. I'll make this one five feet as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and check my answers here. Five feet, that was five and a half. Draw one more in, 5.5, five, five. And then I can move this and draw this in. And the nice thing about this is it's actually drawn to scale. I don't think I explained this properly, but if you go to your bottom right here, when you draw the scale to sketch, these are only drawn to scale. They're like drawing a rectangle in. I have to first scale my drawing to draw it in. So when I hit this, it's asking me for those widths and that height. And so I have this at one inch equals five feet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a six foot wing, five feet. I'm going to draw a six foot, I think this was five and a half, 5.5, 5, six foot wing here. I'm going to snap it. And then I'm going to draw in my wing by using the polyline one. This one. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I guess I'll just draw in this one right here. You can see I'm just using the rectangle for all of these. And you might be thinking, why wouldn't you use the polygon? Do you ever have to use that? I actually find it's a lot easier to just draw the rectangle. And then if you have to adjust something, I will have to in a second. You can actually just draw the rectangle and then drag it as needed. There's different tools for different things, but I found the rectangle one to be just really helpful. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and draw the curb. And so I'm going to snap to this one right here and I'm going to draw right here. And this is where I want to have a curve. I'm going to actually get a move. I'm going to move these rectangles before I, before I do that. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure I highlight. So I'm currently on page five of six. So all these red ones is what I want to highlight. And I'm going to move these so they line up with my curb. Okay, it looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to come in. I'm going to draw my curb. You can see it's trying to snap to those ones that I already have drawn in there. And I'm just going to draw this to that point, roughly where the edge of the catch basin is and hit enter. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to arc. This looks about where I want it. So now you can see this one here is a little bit off. I could come in here and I could add a control point, which I could draw to there, move this guy over and I could again, convert, move this up a little bit to cheat, convert this one to arc. So I'm going to snap this one back here. Try to make it look as, as good as I can. Again, this is it's a sketch, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but kind of trying to make it as pretty as you can. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw in my my back a curve here. So to do that, I'm going to hold control, and that allows me to make a copy of whatever I'm drawing and just drag it over. So I'm holding control, and I'm going to do the curb line. And I want this to be exactly half a foot. So to do that, I'm going to bring in my measure tool. I'm going to make this a little bit extra big, and I can come back in. And I can type in 0 0.5 and hit the little dash and it'll go to exactly one half a foot. So I can drag it to be as close as I close as I possibly can get it. This one looks slightly bigger than half a foot, but see where I get. I'm just gonna push put the arrow key to go down. And now you can see I'm a little bit past. I'm gonna hold this and hold shift. By holding shift, I'm actually adding a new point in, which is what I wanted to do. And I can right click and go to control point, subtract control point. To delete that. Same with this one. I can right click right here at control point, and then I can right click on that one, subtract control point. Another thing I need to do is I need to draw my saw cut line, which typically is three feet outside the base of curb. A couple ways that you could do this you could do the same thing you did with the backing curb, hold the control and drag it out and try to make it three feet roughly. And it's hard to get rid of that curve. I still haven't figured out a way to do that. So what I end up usually doing is just making a new line, a sketch to scale line and typing in three feet. And then if, again, you can see it wants to go perpendicular. So I usually will go down here and I can actually tell right here, this is 16 feet. So I know I need to go an extra three feet. So I'm going to go 19 feet and then I'm going to just break this over. I actually should have dragged this right here. All right. Then this is pretty big saw cut. So I'd probably come in here add a couple more points. I'm holding shift to click on and, and add an extra point in here. Hold shift on this point to subtract it. So now I have a decent saw cut line. I do see that this edge of this edge of this catch basin is right here. So I probably would actually bring it a little bit narrower to tie into that catch basin. You could keep the same color. What I've typically been doing is doing it as green and doing a dash line. If you want to get really fancy, you can actually make a line that says saw in it. If you want to get really fancy, and that probably a, another day to show you how to do that. But for now, I'll just leave it as as dash. And then how do you get the domes in? 
I think these are yellow fill with a hatch, 10% dots in there, and then a black boundary. Actually, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw this in with, I want to make sure they're two feet wide by five feet. That looks good. And this one looks slightly funky. I need to move this one back a touch, five, negative five, negative two. Okay, I want to move this up a tiny bit so it coordinates with the curb. The next step would be to bring in and draw these comments in. Again, there's a million ways you could do this. I, I like this little blue circle look, but there's a million ways you could do this. What I'm going to do to cheat a little bit is I'm going to come over and take these ones from the other drawing that I did, and I'm going to just control C for control copy. And then I'm going to do this thing called paste in place, which actually puts them in the exact same spot on the drawing. You can see I have a slightly different layout than I did on the other one. But once you have some in here, you can just control copy and move them over and draw them out as you want. So it's got some flexibility there. And then the last thing to show you is just the measurement toolbar. So this all is drawn to scale. So I'm not really having to guess with these. I, I should be able to just push my M or push this, push this measure tool up here, the length command, and you should be able to just measure exactly. And it's a good check to make sure that your drawing is uh, to scale and, and working the way you want it. Okay, so that's the, the slow way to do this. The fast way, which I think is hopefully what we can get to, is now that I've made this drawing, I can actually group these together and save them in my toolbox, either with all these comments on them or with just the red lines. You can see, so I've, I've already made some in here. This one, for example, I could, this is a four by four ramp. I can just drop this in here. If I need to rotate this 90 degrees, I can do that. If I want to rotate it a tiny skew, I can also do that with a very tiny rotation. So I think this is where a lot of us are going to see all the value, dropping it in like that. Or if you want to go to the next level, you could even drop it in with all of your notes on it and put it where you want it to go and then just you know, ungroup it. So I have my big grouped thing here. Right click, ungroup, and manipulate it as I need to. I mean, you have the basis of it. You can just drop on top. So this is sort of similar to using MicroStation and copying a copying a design and then just altering it to fit your needs. So I think this is where I see a lot of the power is in the ability to group all these comments together and then save them in the toolbox. And to do that, again, you have all your comments here and you could save some of them, all of them, just the ones you want. You go in here to group it and then you can right click and add to tool chest. That's probably the best best way to do it. So that into my tools. Now I have a, a big group of ADA ramps and maybe we're going to be making a shared toolbox that we can people can use and have a good starting point for their ramps. That was what I wanted to show everyone today.